Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. This time I want to talk about HDRI images and how to use them to light your scene. For anyone who doesn't know, HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Image and it's a 360 degree panoramic image which contains lighting information that can be used to illuminate your scene with realistic natural lighting. A great place to find free HDRI images is polyhaven.com. You don't have to create an account or sign up for a subscription or anything like that. Just go to the site, browse for some images you like, and download them. I always get the 4K HDR images, but they have EXR and they also have different file sizes if you're looking for that. But the 4K HDR work just fine. Now, here in my Blender scene, I've set up a ground plane, a sphere, and a camera. And if I switch to material preview mode, you can see that I've applied a tiled material to the floor and a chrome material to the sphere. The reflection you see in the sphere comes from the default background material that loads up when you open Blender. It's not an HDRI, but you can see when I switch to the render preview mode, we don't have any lighting in here. So let's go ahead and get that set up now. Start by going to World Properties and clicking on the yellow color button. And I'll choose Environment Texture and click Open and browse to the location of my HDRIs. And I'm going to select this one. Next, I'll go to Render Properties and I'm going to change to Cycles. And then I'll hit zero on the number pad to switch to Camera View. And that's about it. I can go ahead and render out an image with realistic natural lighting. But what if I don't like the shadow back here behind the sphere? What if I want my light source over here with the shadow over here? To make adjustments, I'll need to switch to the Shading tab and then come down here to the Node Editor. And you'll see that by default it, it's set to Object. So I'll switch it to World. And now I can see my HDRI setup. Now you'll need to make sure that you have the Node Wrangler enabled in your preferences. If you don't have it enabled or you're not sure, Go to the Edit menu, Preferences, the Add-on section, and type in Node. And if this isn't selected, just click this little box to enable it. And then come down here and Save Preferences. And then you can close this window. Now I can come back down here and click on the HDR node to select it. And then hit Control t and that will add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Now if you go to the rotation section of the mapping node, you can rotate the HDRI image around the z-axis. So go to the render preview mode, and then you can start rotating it around until you get it where you want it. But first, Hit zero on the number pad to switch to camera view. So now you see what it looks like in your camera and there you go. I think I'll set it right about there. So now you're ready to render. But what if you don't want to see the HDRI in the background? You can simply go to the render properties, come down to the film section and click transparent and that'll drop the background image out, but you still have all the lighting information. So to render this image, I want to go to the Output Properties and make sure my file format is set to PNG with RGBA set as the color. Now if I hit F12, it'll start rendering. Once it's finished, I can go to Image and Save. And if I open it up in Photoshop, 
you can see there's no background. So if I duplicate this layer, I can then paint on the layer behind it. Or I can add a different background image or whatever I want. So that's all fine and good, but what if you want the lighting information from the HDRI, but you want a solid color for the background, or you want to use the background image from a different HDRI and have it all part of the render without having to do any post work in Photoshop. Well, all you have to do is go back down to the node editor, select the background node, then shift D to duplicate it, drag it down here, then click the color box and you can set the color to whatever you want. Then hit shift A, type mix into the search box and select the mix shader node. And I'll put it right here. Now you want to plug the background outputs into the shader inputs. Then grab the shader and plug it into the surface. Then hit shift A again. And in the light or in the uh, search box, type in light. And you want a light path. Now you want to plug the is camera ray down here into the FAC and go back to render properties and turn off transparent. And now you've got your color back there. And of course you can go back down here and you can change the color to whatever you want. Maybe nice blue. And if you want to use a different HDRI for the background, select the Texture Coordinate node, the Mapping node, and the HDR node, and then Shift-D to duplicate. And you can select a different HDR, and plug the color into the color of the background node. And now we have a different background. And of course, you can rotate it around just like the other one. Now, maybe you don't want to come over to the shading tab to rotate the HDRI. Maybe you want to rotate it without leaving the main viewport. So to do that, let's jump back over to the layout tab. Put zero on the number pad to jump out of camera view. Then I'll hit shift A and add an empty sphere, or you can use a cube or whatever you want. Then come over to the object properties and give it a name like uh, HDRI rotation. Now go back over to the shading tab the texture coordinate node, click on the object selection and pick your empty. And then instead of generated to vector, we want object to vector. Now you can go back to the layout tab, click on the empty to select it, hit zero to jump back into camera mode. And then you can rotate the background by rotating the empty. Okay, that's about it for HDRIs, or at least that's all I currently know about them. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.